Prince Charles has sparked fury among Australian Republicans, after racking up a bill of over £160,000 during his landmark tour of Australia in March and April. Republicans took aim at the Prince's 13-strong entourage, which included a travelling yeoman, who has been described as a member of staff who ensures the right clothes are in the right place at all times. However, one critic branded the role a baggage man with an ancient title. Michael Cooney, national director of the Australian Republic movement, took aim at the prince and questioned why the Australian government had paid for his entourage when farmers in rural regions including Dubbo, New South Wales, were struggling following a devastating drought. Speaking to News.com, he said, the government should explain to drought-stricken Dubbo farmers why we could afford to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars before Prince Charles had even arrived in Australia. Why did the government force Australians to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to bring butlers, valets and travelling yeomen? Prince Harry may carry his own bag but the next king of Australia has more staff than a VIP plane can carry. Local media added that the costs accrued by the prince during his tour showed just how expensive a King Charles could be for Australians should he succeed his mother, Queen Elizabeth. Prince Charles nevertheless cut back on the size of his entourage in 2018 compared to his tour of Australia in 2012, when he was accompanied by 18 members of staff. It was also revealed in September that the Australian taxpayers were burdened with a $19,000 bill for a private trip Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall made to see an old friend. The royal couple visited billionaire hedge fund owner Sir Michael Hintz at his home in Gundagai, around 400 kilometres southwest of Sydney. It was initially reported that the private visit would come at no cost to the taxpayer. But it was later revealed that the Australian government did cover the costs of the royal entourage's stay during the excursion. A Freedom of Information request made by journalist William Summers revealed that around $18,916 was spent on Prince Charles' 13 strong entourage, who stayed in a hotel while the Duke and Duchess stayed in Sir Hintz's property. Recovered receipts reveal that around $11,000 was spent on chauffeur driven cars while hundreds of dollars was spent on food and restaurant bills. Australia's Department of the Prime Minister and Cabinet nevertheless defended its spending, and stated it followed official guidelines. The statement said, a small number of support staff from Clarence House and the Australian government accompanied their Royal Highnesses on this portion of the programme. These support staff were responsible for transport and accommodation arrangements as well as final preparations for the official elements of the visit. All costs for official visits are expended in line with Australian government procurement guidelines. The Australian government did not pay for accommodation or meals for their royal highnesses during this portion of the program. Prince Charles received a warm welcome in Northumberland where he kick-started a whirlwind two-day solo tour in England's northeast by visiting one of the most iconic British World Heritage sites and trying some of the local delicatessens. The Prince of Wales was all smiles when he arrived at the Sill, a national landscape discovery centre, to officially mark its opening earlier today with his wife Camilla nowhere to be seen. The heir to the throne received a full visitor experience to the unique site, launched in July 2017 and regarded by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, as one of the world's natural beauties. Clarence House said on Twitter, the Prince viewed exhibition displays and here's how it and year-round activity, education and events program delivers 30,000 activity days for visitors, schools, businesses, universities and community groups. The Prince who sported a great suit with a colorful tie and handkerchief, seemed positively impressed by the building's grossed roof which has been built to mimic the shapes and geology of the Great Windsill and natural rock feature. Admiring it, Charles was heard saying, Aha, look at that. After meeting the staff of the visitor center, Prince Charles unveiled a plaque officially marking the opening of the sill. The plaque read, The Sill, National Landscape Discovery Center. To commemorate the visit of HRH the Prince of Wales officially marking the opening of the sale. 12th September 2018
Charles also met with members of the staff from the SILS 86 Bed Youth Hostel and discussed the running of the business with them. Despite having in front of him a day packed with official engagements, the prince took the time to meet school children visiting the center. He could be heard jokingly asking the youngsters if they were going to be given lunch. And he laughed when one of the pupils enthusiastically nodded in reply to his question on whether they had learned something during their visits to the center. He and a teacher agreed that the children seemed well trained. Prince Charles later visited the famous Hexham's Farmer's Market, where he was welcomed once again by hundreds of people and Hexham Mayor Tom Gillanders. A baby holding a Union flag attracted the prince's attention, as Charles sweetly told him, by time, rest time. At the market, guided by Neil Brown, Northumberland County Council's markets manager, Charles met traders from the Produced in Northumberland scheme, a project promoting local businesses. Enthusiastic stall owners offered the royal samples of their goods, including jam, cheese and honey, and gave him a number of goodie bags. Eli's Poppy, a trader known as Sauce Queen went as far as making a special HRH delicacy which she named Royal Blue, and consists in a combination of Cropwell Bishop Stilton, white truffle and white wine. The prince's visit continued to the birthplace of heritage gardener Lancelot Capability Brown and the Kilder Salmon Center. Charles's tour of the Northeast continues tomorrow, when he will travel to the Moreland Spirit Company's Heppel Gin Distillery in Marpeth before concluding the trip with a visit to the Alnwick Garden. Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, did not join Prince Charles today. According to the royal family's engagements diary she did not have any events to attend. Camilla suffered a brutal rejection from the Queen when she first dated Prince Charles in the early 1970s, with the monarch refusing to let Camilla near her, according to a shocking claim. Prince Charles and Camilla met in mid-1971 when they belonged to the same social circles and occasionally attended the same events, including polo matches at Smith's Lawn in Windsor Great Park. They began dating around 1972. And as their relationship became more serious, Charles was introduced to Camilla's family in Plumpton, and Camilla met certain members of the royal family. However, the future Duchess was reportedly banned from meeting the Queen, with both the monarch and Prince Philip disapproving of the relationship as Camilla was viewed as unmarriageable. Christopher Wilson, a royal biographer and journalist, commented on the Queen's dislike for Camilla, saying, the Queen and Prince Philip knew everything about Prince Charles' relationship with Camilla, the Queen said I will not have that woman in my presence. Prince Philip reportedly took a more pragmatic view of mistresses, but believed unsuitable partners should be kept in the background. Speaking in the documentary series, The Royal House of Windsor, Mr. Wilson said, The problem with Prince Charles was, you are not supposed to be in love with your mistress, you are supposed to have sex with your mistress, but Charles had fallen in love with Camilla, and that really screwed everything. Historian Professor Jane Ridley noted the Queen was keen on steering Prince Charles away from dating someone deemed as unmarriageable, following the union of Wallace Simpson and King Edward VIII which led to his abdication. She said, the only thing that the royal family wanted to avoid was that the Prince of Wales should become involved in a woman who was unmarriageable from the point of view of a royal family but it seemed this pattern was reappearing. The Queen's dislike for Camilla reportedly stemmed from the fact she was not a virgin, and had former boyfriends prior to dating Prince Charles. Historian Dr. Piers Brendan commented on the issue, saying, It was absolutely vital to have on the throne someone who was a virgin, a future Queen must have no past. Author Penny Junior added, There is no suggestion that Camilla was a loose woman, but she had had boyfriends. Notably, Camilla had been dating Prince Charles' polo friend Andrea Parker Bowles, whom she later married in July 1973. Ems Jr. described Camilla as funny, outspoken, and a bit outlandish, who had lived a little compared to Prince Charles who was still very green around the ears. Prince Charles subsequently fell for Camilla big time, and expressed real sadness when their relationship eventually ended in 1973. Mr. Wilson said, Charles was young, 
he was red-blooded, he was a passionate man, and I think we was looking for someone who could blow him away, and the meeting of the two was like a thunderclap. Prince Charles nevertheless called off the relationship in January 1973 when he traveled to the Caribbean to spend eight months with the Royal Navy, and Camilla subsequently married Mr. Parker Bowles later that year. The breakdown of their relationship caused Prince Charles to spiral out of control, and he subsequently dated a series of girlfriends in his quest to find a suitable wife, according to the documentary. Mr. Wilson said, what he got was a string of arm candy people who he really wasn't that interested in, but people who he took out because it made him look good. Charles eventually met Princess Diana in 1977 while visiting her home, Althorpe in Northamptonshire, and eventually proposed to her in February 1981.